Hey everybody, and welcome to the talk Infrastructure at Arch. Making servers go <laughs> um, where we talk about the infrastructure at Arch and uh, how to make servers go <laughs> um, So anyways, our agenda for the day is uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. Uh, then I'm going to introduce the team to you. I'm going to give you an overview about uh, you know our general infra stuff, um, what tools we use and so on. Um, then I'm going to delve into a, a past kind of like a, some history lesson about our our infra, where we come from, um, and then we're going to see where we currently stand. And then uh, I'm going to see, well, I'm going to basically give you some kind of roadmap that we have, current projects and, and you know, near future and far future projects, and, and how we're going to try to tackle those. And then um, the, I'm going to show you how to you get, uh, you how you can get involved in, in infra at Arch. So a little bit about me. Um, I work, you know, by daytime. Well, mostly anyway. I work as a freelance DevOps consultant and also a software architect. Depends on the job. Um, I'm involved in quite a few open source projects. I uh, also do quite a bit of game dev. I do quite a bit of Rust, and um, I also like CLI tools very much. So if you check my GitHub, you're gonna see many of those. Um, and I joined RH in 2020, uh, 2010 actually, as a trusted user. And uh, I, I think I've been using Arch since I think 2007, not quite sure. Um, but anyway, so um, I, I eventually became a developer uh, and now obviously DevOps. And not quite sure when I became a developer. At some point I took over KDE and this is I think when I became officially developer. All right, enough about me. So the DevOps team, who are these people? So um, you might see, you might have seen some of those faces. Uh, we're not only DevOps, um, we all have packages. So there's Fudrelis, uh, Fresra, who's a very recent joinee actually to the DevOps team. He's not entirely onboarded as of this moment currently. Uh, we're still working on that. Uh, there's Grasolini. Uh, there's Heftig, who maintains the Martex server. There's Yella, there's Antrax, and there's me. And we all do different, like we all have different levels of involvement in this project. Uh, some have their, their their pet parts. We all try to kind of be, be able to do everybody else's job if need be. But uh, mostly, I think it's it's fair to say that everybody has their own topics that they care about, like like anything else in Arch. It's, it's pretty much the same. And the only thing that's a little bit different, I think, is that we have this DevOps team which has regular meetings. And I think this is not the case in, in any, any of the other Arch teams, uh, at least that I'm aware. I think the security people might have something, not quite sure. Um, all right, let's delve into the overview. So um, let's start with servers. Everybody likes servers. So Arch is mostly hosted at Hetzner. Um, we have six Hetzner bare metal servers and 17 Hetzner cloud servers in total. So that's 23 machines, and then uh, we also have two offsite backup servers for Borg. So we use Borg backup for all our backup needs. And on top of that, we have five sponsored servers by Cape. Thanks, guys. Shout out. Um, and uh, I'm afraid we, I have to admit, we have yet to make use of them because we have very recently actually got them. So still, still the process of setting that up. Um, as far as services go, we have quite a quite a few of services, right? So we run like if you look at Arch, you might see you know like the front page and the AUR. Everybody knows of that, but um, there I mean also the wiki, of course. But you know there's there's quite a few services, public services that we provide, and and many of those services that we provide actually, you know they they might be presented to you guys as like a coherent like one software solution or something, like like Arch Web. Um, but actually there's many moving parts involved in any of these. So for instance, um, we we run the archive, so you need this in order to use the Arch Linux, you know, way back machine essentially. Uh, and it's also, it's also does, it also plays a role for reproducible builds. Um, we have Seagit, which you might know as projects.archlinux.org. Currently trying to get rid of that. Um, very recently we've, uh, gotten in a GitLab up and running or well we have we have had it for some time but uh, we're trying to make better use of that as, as time goes on 
Um, yeah, we have the wiki, which is a media wiki. Of course, we have a security tracker. You guys can get involved in security stuff, can post um, stuff there. Uh, we do have a patch tracker. That's a good old patchwork. Trying to get rid of that as well, actually. Uh, the the packages um, that that you might see as you know the the like the package service area or, or like the mirroring infrastructure. That's actually just an rsync service which runs somewhere that everybody uh, pushes the packages to, and then every like all the tier one mirrors sync from that. So it's like the the packages thing that we have is essentially like the tier zero mirror. Um, what else? Yeah, we have Brick. You might have seen him. Like it's a it's a little bot um, that we run to get IRC going or to have like IRC moderation or to e to ease IRC moderation. Actually, uh, we still use Fly Spray as our primary bug tracker. I don't very much like that. I don't think anybody really likes that, but uh, it's what we're currently stuck with. Uh, we are planning a migration, at least a partial migration, of, of some of our projects to GitLab, uh, but we have yet to work out how our package bugs, which is the vast majority of bugs, are gonna be migrated. Um, so we're still working on that. Um, and, and of course, we also have the account service as SSO, but I'm going to talk a bit more about that one later in particular. And so we have also some staff-only services, actually. Uh, we have a build server that we uh, offer our staff. So, you know, it is a pretty beefy machine. It's it's kind of last gen, but it's still pretty beefy. It has 24 cores, so 48 logical cores. Uh, it's also sponsored by Hetzner, so thanks, guys. And uh, so our, our staff can use, or our packages at least, can use that server to build their stuff. Uh, we also have a CAN board, which we're also trying to, actually quite quite soon, we're trying to get rid of that one. It's essentially like a, a, uh, a Kanban board. Uh, it's a free open source Kanban board. We're trying to get that one into GitLab, because GitLab has um, nice, nice uh, features for that. And so we're trying to, to get rid of some of our services, which are now super suited by GitLab. Uh, we obviously have some mail servers. Um, I say mail servers because we have multiple mail servers. We're trying to kind of perhaps condense down our mail stack a little bit. Our mail stack has uh, has grown a little bit over the years and uh, trying to get get that in order uh, soon-ish. We have res very recently we've gotten a monitoring stack that Yellow has been working on. So we used to use Zabbix and it's Zabbix is kind of old you know fashion and so we're trying to switch to grafana prometheus alert manager which is working quite well so far we have pretty nice red dashboards um if we have some time at the end i might be able to so show you guys some of that uh, and then we have a matrix that i already said that Teftic um maintains and we have a quasl and i'm not sure who maintains that to be honest um anyway so um over you about code so um we have well, we, we try to follow infrastructure as code where, where possible. So that means if you make a change in, like if you want to make a change in any of the servers, you should may have a corresponding code change somewhere. So for instance, we use Terraform where we can and Ansible where we must. So that means uh, Terraform is a tool that allows you to write declar declaratively um, specify some infrastructure elements. And the nice thing about Terraform, as opposed to Ansible, is that it actually does take care of cleaning up things after you remove them, or that it actually tries to make sure that the the status that you give it is actually the status that it, that's, that's expected in the end. And Ansible, in some cases, has a really hard time doing that. So, um, but yeah, you know, we still have to use Ansible in many cases. So, for instance, this is what it looks like. So we have eight thousand lines of YAML, <laughs> delicious YAML. Uh, which is pretty much all of it that's Ansible, and we have 2,000 lines, lines of HTL. So, for instance, in HTL or in Terraform, we specify our uh, Hetzner v cloud servers, v, v service, v Hetzner cloud servers, whatever. Uh, we specify all of our domains, our IPs, uh, all of that. We specify all of our keycloak things. Yeah, all of that. Um, some some minor services as well. And and Ansible, we have like the vast majority of everything. So we have 63 Ansible roles, that's quite a bit. Uh, that's that's everything essentially. It's like email stuff, that's that's uh, all the services that you that you see that I that I, uh, talked about earlier, except for Keytlog is in there. So everything is in there. It's, it's uh, quite vast. You can take a look at that if you like. 
Um, and I think as time goes on, we're going to see more of those things move to Terraform, maybe, perhaps. It depends. Uh, but we're actually pretty happy with Ansible. It's not, it's not a bad tool. It's just, you know, YAML gets tedious sometimes. And, you know, when you work with YAML mostly, like every day, you kind of kind of want to see something else. But, you know, that's what, that's what we're stuck with, I guess. Anyway, so um, the past. Let's, let's continue. So dark times. Dark times um, lay in our past. Um, yeah, I imagine, like, when I talk about the past, uh, basically, speaking of Arch, when it was like first made till about four years ago so that that's the past that's the dark times and basically everything was mainly managed so th there wasn't like no centralized server management whatsoever right basically there were just a bunch of servers uh in in some cases quite quite more or less literally in somebody you know else's bedroom um and and all the like the devops that wasn't really like the term devops there was not in, like an arch devops team there really was nothing like that. Um, it's it was more or less just there were some like people that managed some servers. They had some scripts. They knew how to do it. Um, there were no docs. Um, we essentially had a best factor of one for every uh, single server. So if you're not not familiar with this term, basically it means you know if there's one person that knows how to do something and they get hit by a bus. Now, now we have zero people that know about how to do something, and so that's a bus factor of one. Um, and it was really hard for outsiders to collaborate. Essentially, it was, it was actually impossible, to be honest. Um, well, because there was no, no way, right? There was no code. Uh, we, we couldn't just give SSH uh, access out to our outsiders. So there really wasn't any way outsiders could possibly collaborate with us. And there was no DevOps team. So as I said before, there's like only like a loose collection of, of people, different accesses to different servers. Um, and there was no centralized issue management. So that if somebody like had a problem with mirrors or something, uh, and somebody other that managed ArchWeb or some, some other service had to be kind of aware of that, then there wasn't really any nicely defined way to, to share that and there really wasn't any automations that were in place outside of cron so we did have quite a fair bit of cron doing work so automated bash scripts essentially but really there, there wasn't anything that automated things between servers so yeah that that was that was a pretty dark time so, but then eventually we approached the road to enlightenment. And that meant uh, we started using Ansible. So the first Ansible commit was made in May 2016. Um, this is essentially also the, like how far our infrastructure repo goes back. And since then we've had a pretty recent, uh, a pretty steady stream of migrations towards Ansible. And we've also started using Terraform in uh, February 2019. And I think we originally started using that for specifying V service for Hetzna, I think. Uh, we started documenting things. Documents, uh, documenting stuff is important. Uh, and we started doing, we started the, the DevOps team, which didn't exist before. Um, well, and that brings us to the present. And um, well, now we do have a DevOps team with consistent access to all services and servers that we have and most things that we have are now in Ansible and Terraform so that's something I'm really happy with there's still some stragglers here and there for instance like mail aliases are still managed manually you're not gonna find those in Ansible I'm pretty unhappy about that <laughs> because you know if somebody <laughs> made a mistake there then uh, that would be pretty horrible for Arch emails and also pretty much a security problem but uh, we're, we're gonna get there on baby steps uh, most things that we have are now documented or well most important things anyhow so we also didn't we used to not document any kinds of procedures or processes like onboarding offboarding stuff like that uh, it was kind of just like in the moment like if somebody could remember to do something that they do it and, and otherwise they wouldn't really have a checklist so we started using checklists quite a bit for that 
kind of purpose like in the, in the end i would prefer to be automating that but you know in the meantime i think it, it would be it's okay to just kind of have a checklist it's it's better certainly than than having nothing at all um and we did start a migration i think and that's what i said earlier like in february 2019 i think we started the migration from bare metal service to cloud service and um so that has a few reasons. First of all, um, we like compartmentalization, but that means that we want to have one cloud server that it does basically host one service, and it allows us to, in the end, be pretty like pretty cheap about specific servers and services. And we also had this effect on bare metal servers where we had side effects, where basically one service that existed on the server would be influencing another service. So this is obviously broken compartmentalization, but it was just done that way because it was easy and simple and was it was kind of like a hack. And we don't really like hacks anymore, so we we did this migration, or we're currently like in the middle of this migration. And yeah, that's still going on. We're still sorting out some servers, but in the end, I think we're gonna have a cheaper, more secure, and I hope faster and w much better documented. Um, well general info after we finish this migration to cloud servers. We're not going to get rid of them, like going to get rid of bare metal servers entirely because we still need hardware features for some things. And obviously like the build box would be much cheaper as a bare metal server. But from the vast majority of services, I think the cloud servers from Hetzner are basically the best alternative that we have. And then uh, lastly, we also have automations uh, and CI, which we used to not have at all, right? We had no CI in, in any other of our uh, patches or merge requests or anything. Uh, I think we had, like, we had some very, like, sparsely CI, like, sparse population of CI files on, on GitHub at the time. I think we used Travis for some services. Um, but now with GitLab, we, we have like we can offer all projects one consistent and, and well-known CI that's also trusted. So that's also another important thing that we can now do trusted deployments from our own CI because we have our own runners and that's a, that's a big step forward. Um, this is still kind of like mostly a work, a work in progress, but I think it's one of the most important features because Arch being mostly volunteer or pretty much all volunteer driven, means that um, any time that we, we as a team do not spend human resources on any of our, well, computer tasks, like computers are much better doing, like automated stuff, like building stuff, uh, deploying things, uh, CI stuff, making sure that unit tests are run and stuff like that. Uh, I think all of that time could be much better spent on, on actually working on real problems in the distro, and it would be much less much less exhausting for everybody that that had to do those tedious tasks and also it will ensure that um we just have a much better foundation for for merge requests and and we make sure that all of those tests are being run and that'll make sure things are more stable for our uh, software that we actually develop um so one important thing that i talked about that we didn't have before i think that's really probably like the centerpiece of I hope um, our our DevOps revolution in Arch, uh, GitLab, and uh, so we received an ultimate li license from um, GitLab.com, I think, um, who offer ultimate licenses to all open source projects that can demonstrate that they're open source. So now we have GitLab. So yoo um, and that was a pretty big step. So it, that should be our central repository for code hosting issues, collaboration. Um, as I said before. We earlier weren't really that easy to collaborate with, which is obviously not great for a a project that really requires volunteers to have fun doing what they are doing because there's no other incentive. So uh, we're trying to make this a bit less, um, or making it make it a bit more seamless and and make more fun for everybody. And uh, yeah, you used to have to send arch patches for many projects on mailing lists. Like it's uh, 1980, and uh, now we actually, I think we arrived uh, quite confidently in uh, the 2010s at least. Now we have merge requests, so <laughs> hooray. Um, and as I said earlier, we can also hopefully get rid of patchwork, flyspread, Kenboard at the least. Um, maybe more, I don't know. 
Uh, but for now, these are these services are slated to be mostly or completely removed in favor of GitLab. Uh, we have an overview of all our issues, and um, I can actually show you that. So this is an overview that we have of all our currently migrated projects. We haven't finished the GitLab migration, obviously, but um, if you look at this, this is essentially like the arch group in GitLab and allows you to look at all the issues. We have quite a few issues, um, but keep in mind, many are th still in Flyspray. There's no package issues here at all. So basically, in arch, you always like, it's not just a distribution that has packages, right? Uh, obviously, we mostly have packages and we mostly have package bugs, but we also have many software projects of our own, like Arch ISO, you might know, Arch Boxes for the VMs, Arch Linux Docker, um, the Infra project itself, and, and many other projects that we have. And so these are all listed here. Um, you can actually, if you want to, you can actually uh, lay, um, filter by label, for instance, and see whether the label is um, good for this issue. So some projects tried using or are gonna use. Or are you currently using this tag, which is a global tag, and then you can see which projects currently are by the reporters considered to be good first issues. So something how you could potentially get involved. Um, and as I said before, we have a powerful CI for everything now, and that's also actually available to our users. We hope it doesn't get abused too bad. But if it does, we gotta you know come up with something. We set some sensible defaults, but guys, please don't abuse our CI. We only have this one. <laughs> I'm pretty happy that we do have it at all. Um, so um, next topic uh, that you might be wondering about is Arch Linux SSO. So we have Arch Linux single sign-on. Uh, it's just a fancy way of saying that you have one account that's shared among all the services that we have, and also one login that you have so that's shared. So if you log one into one service you should be logged into everything. And that allows us to, so, you know, you used to have like accounts for like wiki, bugs, so Flyspray, uh, uh, AUR, um, possibly security tracker. Uh, maybe if you were a tester, you had an Arch web account to, to sign off packages. So there were many accounts and, and internally, obviously we have some more. Um, and so this just became really, really hard to manage. So imagine somebody gets onboarded, offboarded, and for users it was just plain annoying, you know, having to manage multiple accounts, multiple identities, and what for, right? And we also have the forums. And it would be really nice to just have like one persistent set or one persistent account that would just follow you around everywhere. And it would also mean that we have one central place to manage accounts and also to to manage access levels. So for instance, on our uh, SSO currently, we force two-factor auth for all users, which we think is, is really the way, the way forward and to ensure that no accounts are taken away. We realized that this is maybe inconvenient for some users, but we decided that is probably the best way forward to ensure that, uh, well, users wouldn't, you know, wouldn't suffer from reused passwords quite as badly as if they didn't have a, a two-factor off. And also considering our users are mostly pretty technical, uh, it's, I think it's fair to say that this is a, a reasonable choice to make. Yeah, so already we have one account for everything, um, two-factor everywhere. And uh, this is actually realized using the software keylog by Red Hat, which is, well, it's, it's a, it's a type of uh, IAM, which is identity, uh, no, identity and access management. And it's, it's just a piece of Java software that we use, which, which seems to be the best compromises, uh, the, seems to offer the best compromise out of all the various software that does pretty much this thing out of there. We also considered LDAP and, and you know, all of its implementations for a bit, but LDAP really is more geared towards like uh, systems logins and not so much towards uh, web software logins. So you can use LDAP with uh, web software, but um, Keylog, which uh, uses OIDC, so OpenID Connect and SAML, seems to give us more, um, let's say, access uh, control and, and seems to be better geared for the web. So this is what we, we uh, rolled with. 
And also we talked, we talked to the KDE people that did the migration to their LDAP back then. And they said they were pretty unhappy with LDAP and they're changing away from that. So that's another thing. Um, so yeah, what's, what's the look like? What's the roadmap like? Um, well, I said we had some migrations that we're still doing and we're still in the midst of that. Um, and since I just talked about SSO, obviously one very hard topic is to get all the accounts merged somehow because we don't really want users to use uh, to lose their access to any of the accounts. Um, currently, we have uh, SSO enabled only for internal, like, for like for staff accounts. And for users, we're going to have to get creative. We're going to have to make sure that we can really prove access, so that the users can really prove access. For instance, for the like forums account or wiki account or whatever, before um, merging that into their one SSO account. This is going to be a topic that we're going to be busy with for quite a long time, I believe. Um, and then only then can we actually connect those accounts as those services to, to the SSO. So currently it's mostly an internal tool, but it will certainly at some point become a more generally available tool, especially for GitLab. We're going to um, open up GitLab at some point and then, or well, pretty soon actually, I hope. Uh, we really prepared um, most of everything for GitLab to be generally available. And then hopefully we can give everybody access uh, to that. Uh, we are also migrating from Mailman 2 to Mailman 3, which is uh, a bit of an annoying migration, but it has to be done because Mailman 3 is uh, actually modern and supported and Mailman 2 isn't. So that if, if you guys don't know, this is our uh, mail mail server list software that we have and we need to automate more things as said before i think any time that is spent doing things that the computer can do better is probably time spent that we should be automating it instead and then the computer can do all things like the the problem about automation like the only central problem is uh security because if you give a computer access to do things and you fuck up <laughs> then you might be accidentally deleting all of our Arch Linux. So this would be quite regrettable, I, I think. I hope everyone agrees. And so we got to make sure that, or if you know, if somebody you know hacks the box or whatever, then we wouldn't want to risk that. So this is something we have to look into. And eventually, we, get, we should get rid of most of our bare metal servers. So we want to finish the migration to Behost or VPSs or whatever, and then uh, we can get rid of the hardware servers, which will also alleviate some of our pains uh, as far as uh, hard drive changes, for instance, go, or upgrading or something like that. So that's going to be much easier. So um, next part is known issues of, of our future endeavors or things that we know are problematic in our current future up ahead is that, for instance, our farm software FluxBB is essentially unmaintained and that, you know, it's PHP software. So it's kind of like double bad. So you don't want to have unmaintained PHP software under any circumstances. Uh, but the problem is that this is currently our reality. So um, we're really trying to get something else there instead. I don't know. Um, we have no SSH audit logs. Um, so essentially that means or like if, if anybody of our DevOps currently logged into any server, they can essentially do anything they want without being watched. Um, and also anybody can use Ansible roles at any time. And we would prefer if we had some kind of paper trail for that. So this is kind of hard. We do trust our DevOps. So this is not about trust so much. It's more about being able to to know when somebody did something for, for general auditing so that you know if something fails, you can see who did what and then maybe gather some, gather some information about the nature of the failure. And as I said before, our current May setup really needs renovation and innovation, frankly. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of from the very old days. Hasn't really changed much. It's going to change for sure when we um, connect it to SSO to Keytlog. Uh, so yeah, that is also still up. It's a known issue. I don't really have any remedy for that. We basically just gotta check it out and see what see what's good. <laughs> um, we need better GDR compliance automation. We currently have uh, we try to do our best to be GDR compliant um, where we can, 
but I think this is done mostly manually and and every team basically manages by themselves so wiki people and forums people have the different ways of dealing with this and uh, it would be really nice to have some more general solution this also plays in there with the SSO thing so if somebody has complete control over their account from one central place this would be easier for us to do but it's certainly a, a hard problem that has no quick fix so for the time being I think we're stuck doing this manually yeah so finally the call for action so get involved uh, Arch is 100% volunteer driven um, and everything we do is public I might have shown you this before but everything we do is public so this is our info repo if you go to this link you're gonna see this uh, this stuff popping up and and uh, I'm happy to report that actually we've had a recent influx of active collaborators so that's really really something nice especially in the DevOps thing or you know things are sometimes complicated and kind of annoying I'm really happy about having some collaborators join um, but we always need more people helping out so uh, make sure that you join Arch Linux DevOps in uh, Freenode IRC and just ask to help out there's usually somebody around from us if we're not all sleeping at the same time which rarely happens I grant you that um, and just ask for help and um, or ask for an issue or something or maybe pick an issue right uh, you can join the mailing list it's not super active because we're mostly inactive on IRC uh, but the really important things are posted to the mailing list um, and yeah get involved we are a super friendly bunch uh, breaking servers is great fun especially you know if it's 4 a.m. and you really have to get up at like 9 amazing uh, get involved, uh, break some servers with us. We only have so many arms and legs. Just, you know, grab an issue, make a PR, make sure something breaks, uh, we'll deploy it, uh, no questions asked. Um, and But seriously, you don't have to be a super expert to be of any help to us, all right? You, you can, basically, most part of DevOps is just learning on the job. I mean, just look at the DevOps culture currently like there's one new Silicon Valley startup tool coming out like every week every day maybe I don't know uh, some new amazing YAML based technology uh, you, you can't possibly be an expert on all of these things basically just you know uh, get involved uh, pick something that you that sounds interesting to you and just kind of try to tackle it uh, we're all learning on the job basically just just try your best <laughs> I, I suppose um, it, it really doesn't matter that much. Uh, we are all here to help. Uh, we all make mistakes. Uh, basically, just just try it. Uh, thanks, uh, guys, for listening this far. If if you've made it, here's some links uh, that I've also shown the presentation, and uh, also my my personal page if you if you're interested in that. Uh, but apart from that, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, get involved, uh, and see you in IRC. Yes, man. Um, Hello. Let's have a look at some questions. Nice talk there. Uh, sure, thanks. Nice wrap up of all the infrastructure we're running. Um, I've split up the questions a bit uh, in servers and services. So uh, maybe let's have a look at the servers first. Um, one of the prominent questions was basically by a lot of people, is uh, the Arch infrastructure actually running on Arch? Yes, uh, I'm happy to report that um, all of our critical and also non-critical servers are running almost entirely on Arch. I say almost because um, we also use Docker sometimes and we sometimes use non-Arch Docker images and we run some some minor services on other distributions for testing, in fact. All right, cool. Um, our server... Uh... Back, uh, server maintenance handled basically updates etc that's a question by Makilanu. right so i'm gonna take this question as it meaning that how do we get notified about updates and then how do we perform those updates so we get notified by prometheus um yellow build a prometheus explorer that allows us to see which servers have how many pending updates and then if that is like too many then uh, we we update and we currently perform the updates manually because uh, you know we gotta make sure that things uh, happen nicely and we don't do any automated updates currently. All right, fair enough. Um, same person, Maclenu asked uh, if there are any pros or cons of bare metal servers that you're currently seeing or facing basically in this infrastructure. Uh, sure. So the pros are they are better bang for the buck. Um, they have greater performance. Um, cons are they are harder to manage. Um, if you fuck up, you have to 
uh, well, basically reboot the same thing, and then uh, it's kind of kind of annoying to mess around with that. And they're hard to provision because you can't just upload a cloud image, at least on Hetzen you can't, and uh, in uh, VPSs you can. So, um, and they're also, of course, um, kind of hard to to um, uh, put into little provisions. So this is also why we want to use uh, VPSs in the future. Yeah, makes sense, I guess. Uh, I guess following up on that, there's a question by Ebal uh, in regards to VMs and their provisioning. Um, more or less, uh, I can I can read the question for you. Uh, I'm guessing you are using uh, VMs or VPS instead of dedicated boxes, which we are to some extent. Uh, so, so are you using Packer to build immutable images based on Arch Linux? So uh, when you update, upgrade these images every week, every month, um, or is there like a CI, CD automation for that right so um we don't have any immutable infrastructure currently but we use packer and we use packer to provision the vpss and the so the vpss are are they are pretty long lived so we we treat them as if they were normal dedicated boxes and so we maintain them and update them just the same but we initially provision them using a packer image that we update ad hoc once we need a new machine mm. yeah so in the vein of uh Arches, uh, install once, uh, always update. Um, there's a question by ArchGuest uh, on how do you handle security of the servers uh, in regards to hardening, uh, managing roles and accounts, etc. Sorry. Can we, sorry, can you read that again, please? Yeah. Um, how do you handle security of the servers? Um, this is in regards to hardening and managing roles. Ah, and I see. Accounts. So secrets. Yeah. Um, yes. Sure. So we use Ansible Vault for all of that, and basically all of our stuff mm. is in Ansible Vault, and it's all in the repository. All right. Cool. Um, do we currently do uh, disk encryption on any of the uh, bare metal machines? No. Or the but we VMs? should. Um, yeah. We are currently trying to set this up. Giancarlo has something in the pipe for that, but mm -hmm. it's really, actually, really hard to to really get this right. And yeah, yeah. Well, we're working on this. It's something we're looking into, but it's it's really really hard to get right, especially because we don't have any machine access directly. Yeah. I I have a Ansible setup for that if you're interested, <laughs> but I'm not <laughs> sure if it if it if it works. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the problem, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it works for for my use case currently, yeah. so I know. Um, I, I guess one of the more interesting questions, also in regards to to hardware and maintenance and so on, is um, what made you choose Hetzner to host your services rather than another cloud provider? That's by Dr. Hashimoto. Uh, right, because well, back in the day when we started doing all of this, there wasn't that many alternatives really, uh, and Hetzner really was the cheapest by far. And we've just kind of grown, you know, happy with them. Frankly, it's, they provide good services. Um, there's really no ch reason for us to change. Yeah, cool. Um, I guess the Ansible Vault question was already answered. There was a specific question by Peter Strudel oh. in in regards to the secrets and so on that's handled by Ansible Vault. Um, I guess that also leads me to a question that is kind of interesting in general for all of this type of infrastructure question. What is the bus factor currently uh, for managing the infrastructure um, that Arch maintains? So technically speaking, all of the people that were in the list that I had in the other slide, I think seven or eight or so, they should all have access to all of the servers. So if something breaks, we have at least have those people to be able to manage it. Now, of course, there's also the, the question of knowledge transfer. So not everybody knows how to fix everything. And, and in many services, we still are at the um, bus factor of one, uh, but it's much better than it was before. So mm. uh, still one in many cases, um, but we're getting there. We're getting there. That sounds good. Um, let's hop on to the services. Um, there was a question by Lurst, that's the same person who also asked about the bus factor, actually, um, if we use Docker containers for anything. Uh, we do. So we use Docker containers everywhere in GitLab CI. In fact, we even built Arch Linux VMs since very recently. We built the VMs inside of Docker images using Chemo. So um, this is pretty uh, freaky. But yeah, so we uh, use Docker quite a lot. Um, we don't. I don't think we use Docker in any... Uh, production deployments currently, and um, probably it's not going to change because we don't really have any reason to change this currently. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be CI mostly, and of course we use Docker to build Docker images. So the mm -hmm. official Docker images are built inside of Docker images. 
Yeah, Docker the Docker. Um, guess something that I also have to look into in the future to fix my stuff with Archive. So, <laughs> um, there's a question that is probably more uh, tailored towards uh, whether dashboards are actually available publicly, if I understand this correctly. That was uh, asked by KGZ. Uh, if there are Grafana dashboards in a repo somewhere, oh and, yeah, uh, we have a link for that actually. Um, so yeah, we so all of our infra, um, or at least you know that's the kind of the idea that everything we do is infrastructure as code, and so we also provision 100% of the Grafana dashboards that we have as code, um, and so they are available in the repository. You can look them up, you can set them up yourselves, and uh, we hope that in the future we are even able to expose some um, non-critical stats to to others. So. That is something we're looking into currently. Mm. Yeah, good stuff. Um, then we have a question that is more, or a set of questions actually, that are uh, tailored around the the entire uh, SSO um, topic. Uh, will there be uh, already created forum and accounts and so on get merged uh, uh, when we roll out SSO? Well, not when we roll out it. Uh, I mean, we, we've basically rolled it out. Um, there's going to be many steps, and I think this whole process is going to take probably years, frankly. We want to get it right, and um, it's really hard for us to to make sure that users can really demonstrate that they own an account, and we certainly don't want to like err on the err uh, on this side of um, trusting too much um, where it's not like where it's undue. So uh, we got to make sure that. For all of the services, we can find some mechanism where the users can really guarantee that they are that they own this account, and only then we will be able to merge. So for the like for the time being, and for some time to come, uh, users are going to have separate accounts. I'm sorry for that, but at least you know going forward, we're going to have um, you know at some point SSO for everything. Yeah, makes sense. I guess gotta make sure. Um... Are we thinking of switching the forum over to Discourse? There was a question by uh, Bitin. Uh, well, so um, not Discourse in particular. We So we put up this to the forums people and we had them try to kind of decide which forum might carry us until the next decade or something. Um, and of, of course, like Discourse was one of the choices. And for various reasons, some people didn't like that. And we don't really want to make the, sh like we don't really want to call the shots on that because, you know, it's it's a community decision afterwards. Uh, after all, and people gotta wanna manage and like those forums and use them. So we wanna don't wanna make that shot for them. But we have to like I wear my security and maintainability goggles, and everybody else like has to also like it. So there's no decision currently. This course is one of the choices. It's currently not the primary choice, um, but there's many factors that come into this. Mm. Uh, to switch back on a bit of server-related topics, uh, we we have uh, mentioned that Ansible Vault is in use for secret storage and so on. Um, there's a question by uh, Night Fox or by um, about uh, whether we want to exchange the current secret storage with, uh, for instance, something like HashiCorp's Vault, um, given that we're using Terraform. More sure. Or more. Um... We thought about it. It's currently not a priority at all. Um, maybe. I don't know. It's mm. certainly very much in the backlog. Okay. Um, also, uh, a question by KGZ in regards to our Prometheus uh, setup. If we are in need of uh, any uh, well exporters being written for any of our services still. Um, yes. Uh, someone's offering here. <laughs> uh, yes, and we have plenty of projects that we operate, and I think mm -hmm. pretty much none of them have um, like real, you know, business debts export us for them. So, uh, like everything that we have, all of the custom software that we need uh, have still needs exporters. We only have some operation exporters, mm -hmm. but we really could use some more in-depth software um, specific exporters. Yeah, nice. So, okay, do that. If you're hearing this, get in touch. Write some exporters, please. <laughs> um, we have a few more questions around the encryption uh, of our cloud servers. I, I think you mentioned earlier that none of them are actually encrypted yeah, at this no, point no, in time. Yeah, right. Nothing. Okay. So that answers that question as well. Um, uh, do we, apart from uh, the Docker containers, use any LXC containers, for instance? Uh, that's a question by Keto. Any LXD containers? Uh, LXC, yeah, or LXD. LXC, just... yeah, no, we don't. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, we are 
uh, moving to GitLab currently, uh, most of our well in internal projects and and so on. And um, uh, the question by Orhun is uh, if we um, if GitHub is used for anything regarding to DevOps or if it's just a, a well our SVN to Git um, mirror basically for packages and other things. Right. So. Currently, it's only basically the mirror for all of our repositories. So we mirror everything, or the general idea is to mirror everything from GitLab to GitHub and not allow any contributions on GitHub. Um, mm. This might change depending on feedback, uh, but currently this is the way we use GitHub. So basically, it's kind of like an outlet for, for just giving users maybe a bit more uh, kind of like view into the uh, distribution. But um, yeah, we currently don't have any kind of participation plan for using GitHub. And I think that is uh, about all the time you have isn't it yeah i think so we got to wrap up uh, i'm sorry if there were uh, questions left unanswered you can still hook, up, hook us up on the isc channel or through the mail if you uh, if you want to know more yeah i'll That's certainly basic. be around for any other uh, infrared questions or stuff like that all right